Thanks for the introduction and uh, thanks for the organizers to give me this chance to present my research. Uh, so my talk consists of three parts. So in the first part, I will briefly introduce the background and the motivation for multi-scale methods. Uh, in the second part, I will uh, show the eigenvalue decay rate for elliptic operator with piecewise constant coefficient. And uh, in the last part, I will uh, apply the variational multi-scale methods for the convection-dominated diffusion problem. Uh, so, uh, in, the, in many applications, uh, the physical properties can vary several orders of magnitude, and uh, some even dissipate this uncertainty. And uh, thir uh, such applications include the reservoir simulation, material size, uh, the heat and mass transfer filtration process. So for those applications, the classical numerical approaches are in uh, very expensive and uh, infeasible. So this gives rise to the uh, multi-scale methods. So this, this is from the benchmark SP10 test uh, in the reservoir simulation. And the right is one layer from this reservoir. And this is one typical example of these type of applications. Uh, so the motivation for multi-scale measures is that so we will have two meshes, the cost mesh and the fine mesh. So we want to solve the problem on the cost mesh, which cannot resolve the micro-scale feature of the problem. But still, we want to maintain a certain accuracy. And uh, of course, there is no free launch. So our price is to uh, so a, uh, so a number of local problems to get the local basis functions. And uh, we want those local basis functions to have a good approximation to the local solution space. So this is the typical outline of the multi-scale model reduction algorithm. So given the fine model and the inputs, for example, the boundary condition, the initial condition, and we want to get the outputs. So for example, the solution or some quantity of interest. But uh, this route is very expensive because we, want, we need to resolve the micro-scale feature which will require the mesh to be very fine. So instead, we will solve a cheap one. Uh, that is the reduced model or cost model, coupled with the same inputs and uh, our goal is that the outputs from this reduced model should have a good approximation to the outputs from the phi model. So here's a brief literature review on multi-scale methods. So there is the homogenization theory. So that works for a problem that is periodic and uh, that has scale separable properties. And there is the partition or unity methods. And uh, there are a lot of algorithms based on these partition or unity methods, such as the generalized finite element methods, GFAM. So this algorithm also works for low contrast problem. So here the contrast is defined as the maximum, maximum value in the coefficient over the minimum value in the coefficient. And there is the multi-scale finite element methods, MSFM, by Ho and Wu. So this algorithm also works for scale separable problems and also uh, the problems that has low contrast. And there is the variational multi-scale methods, VMS. So this algorithm also works for low contrast problems. And uh, uh, this algorithm is expensive in the sense that to solve the original problem, we are required to solve a number of uh, global problems to get those bases. And uh, the complexity to solve those uh, global basis functions is almost the same as the original problem. To remedy this, uh, so uh, Maquist and Peter Zam proposed this localized orthogonal decomposition method. And uh, the, this will be the focus of my uh, last part presentation. 
So more detail will be in that part. And there is the heterogeneous multi-scale method. Uh, by uh, an enquest, and uh, this algorithm also works for scale separable problems, and uh, it also requires information on the macro scale variables. And there is the flux norm approach, uh, which also works for the low contrast problems, and uh, it is also expensive, similar as the variational multi scale methods. And there is the localized version for this problem. Uh, by Ovidi and Zhang, and there is the generalized multi-scale fine net method methods, and uh, actually this method can can be fitted into the partition or unity method, and due to the uh, proposed uh, local multi-scale basis, this algorithm works especially well for high contrast problems. So the fundamental issue in the multi-scale method is to find the optimal local basis that can approximate the local solution space. So here comes the question. So how many number of bases are needed in each cause element? And uh, what's the approximation pro property of this uh, optimal space? So uh, in, the in the second part, I uh, will try to answer this question for a simple setting with the piecewise uh, constant coefficient. So let this L be an elliptic operator uh, with the piecewise constant coefficient that is depicted in this way. So the background is with value equal to y and the dark region with value equal to eta, eta i for uh, i equal to 1 to m, and m is the number of the inclusions. So for the high, uh, if, the, if this kappa has low contrast, then we know the eigenvalue decay rate or the inverse of this operator, that is of order n to the negative 2 over d, with d as the dimension of the domain. However, if the uh, contrast increased, then this estimate can become inaccurate. Uh, so first, I want to present one result that shows uh, if the if there is high if there is oscillation over the interface between the high contrast inclusion and the background region, then the real equation of this function can be bounded by it to the negative one. Therefore, in the high contrast case, uh, those functions can be ignored. They cannot become the dominant modes for this problem. So based on this result, we can decompose the full space V, which is the H10D, into the direct sum of the four paths. So the first one is a uh, m-dimensional space that is expanded by W1 to Wm, and uh, I will define those functions in the next slides. And uh, also there is the VH that is piecewise harmonic in the background region, as well as the inclusion, that has the average of the flux over the interface equal to zero. And this is, a, this is an infinite space. And uh, there is the VB, that is supported in the inclusions only. And there is the VB0, which is supported in the background region only. So the definition for those W1 and WM is given here. So this is harmonic basis in the background region that is piecewise constant on the inclusions. So uh, my estimate will be based on the min-max principle. So I want to estimate the real equation value for each of those subspaces. So for the first subspace, uh, Vm, we can get the lower bound for the real equation value, and uh, which is independent of the high contrast. Therefore, uh, this space should be embedded into the uh, local space. 
Uh, and also, I can estimate the upper bounds in VH and the VB. So we can apply the plane E equality to get the upper bound in the VB, in the space VB, which can be bounded about by order of e to the negative 1. Therefore, in the high contrast case, this space can also be ignored. And uh, then for the next space, VH, that is piecewise harmonic with average flux equal to zero over the interface. For this one, we can use the uh, layer potential techniques and uh, the asymptotic extension theory to get the upper bound for the real equation value of this function. And uh, it can be also bounded by e to the negative one. So in the high contrast case, those two subspaces can also be ignored. So the remaining one is this VB0. So actually, this one corresponds to the solution space of a degenerate elliptic operator with homogeneous directly boundary condition. But for this one, little is known on the real equation value of this function. And the only known result is when the, per when the diameter of the inclusion is much smaller than the distance in between those inclusions, and the diameter tends to zero, then we know that the Poincaré constant in this degenerate domain, D0, uh, is almost the same as the, the one in the full domain, D. Therefore, we can get algebraic decay rate in this case. And uh, another one is in the periodic case, and the diameter tends to zero. And uh, for this one, we can apply the Poincaré equality to get the constant will be bounded by it, uh, f to i square. So we can have the spectral cap in this case. So if we have uh, the result for the estimate in this will be zero, for example, if this is much smaller than the minimum in this Vm, then we can get the estimate of, the, of this space, the approximation rate of this space. So we can take only uh, m basis in this Vm, and uh, we can get the accuracy bounded by it to the negative one half. So in the high contrast case, this will give a very accurate uh, approximation rate. So here's the first conclusion. So if, if the assumption for the Poincaré constant of the degenerate elliptic operator have this small value, then we can show the spectral gap in the approximation of the local solution space. And uh, we also have just identified the dominant modes. So the future work includes the first is to study on the eigenvalue decay rate in the preferred domain, so we can get rid of this assumption. So the second one is to derive the eigenvalue decay rate for the inverse of the elliptic operator with L infinity coefficient, so we can extend our result to more applications. Uh, now comes the third part of my, uh, my presentation. So uh, this is the convection dominated diffusion problem. And uh, this part is based on the work uh, with Daniel and uh, Mira. Uh, so here's the model. And uh, on a regular domain in R2, and the F2 is the perturbation parameter. And we are interested in the case where F2 tends to zero. And this B is the uh, velocity field, which is divergence free. And uh, F is the fourth term, that is E H negative one. So the, diffic the difficulty of this problem is the occurrence of the layers where F2 tends to zero. Uh, in this case, we need a very fine mesh to get a uh, to get a, a accurate numerical method. Uh, so first, uh, I want to show the performance of the conformal Galaxy approximation. 
So as you know, in the multi-scale meshes, we have two meshes, the coarse mesh and the fine mesh, which are denoted as the T capital H and T small h. Then we can define the coarse scale finite element space and the fine scale finite element space uh, that are piecewise linear conformal uh, finite element space. Uh, for this problem, we can define the bilinear form as this A. And uh, then we can uh, define the Glacken approximation solution UH. To get a reliable solution, we require the small h to be much smaller than the perturbation parameter F2. And uh, if we apply the standard interpolation, then we can get the estimate of this Glocken approximation. So which is of order, order y times this constant, 1 plus h b over f2. So uh, to bound this term, we also require this uh, small h to be much smaller than the perturbation parameter f2. Unfortunately, uh, in this uh, H2 norm of U, uh, it will have a hidden F2 to the negative power. Therefore, uh, actually this rate is not so good for this problem. Uh, therefore, we need some stabilization method. So here's a small list of the state-of-art measures of the stabilization method for this problem. So the first is the residue-based stabilization method, so which includes the streamline diffusion finite element method, glycan least square finite element method, and the residue-free bubbles. And there is the HP finite element methods for this type of problem, and the variational multi-scale methods. And there is the multi-scale fine element method. So uh, in, the next in the next part, I will focus on the variational multi-scale method. So first, we need to define the projection. And uh, here, we will use the Nuno interpolation. And uh, for the Nuno interpolation, we will have this approximation property and the stability estimate i each cause element t. And uh, here I want to emphasize the constant Cih. It will depend on the logarithm of capital H over small h in two-dimensional problem. And uh, in 3D, it will depend on the ratio between capital H and uh, small h. So that's the reason we, uh, we restrict our uh, method on the two-dimensional problem. So based on this projection, we can decompose the fine space with small h as the sum of the cost space plus the kernel of the projection. And uh, we can define the global character based on this projection, and uh, which is def denoted as this c. And based on this global character, we can define the multi-scale test space, uh, which is to subtract the uh, cr uh, global character from the uh, nodal basis in the cost space. And we denote this multi-scale test space as W capital H. And uh, here, uh, we can decompose the five scale space with small h as a direct sum of WH plus RH. RH is the kernel of this projection. Uh, so here's our illustration of the multi-scale test basis. Uh, so here the mesh is the cost mesh, and uh, there is a nodal basis in this uh, point file, point file, and this is the nodal basis. Then we can apply the global character to calculate the character for this nodal basis, uh, which is the second one. And then we can subtract this character from the nodal basis to get the multi-scale test, test basis. And uh, this is the third figure 
And the last one is another view of the third figure. And uh, here uh, it is in the log, uh, log, log mystic uh, uh, color map. So here we can see that the decay of this multi scale test basis is exponentially outside of this local region. And uh, in this simulation, uh, our velocity is in the opposite of this direction. So it is in the 1 1 direction. So therefore, we can, say we can observe that the support of this multi scale test basis is supported locally in the opposite of the velocity direction. Uh, so uh, in this slide, I will show the impact of the choice of the interpolation operator. So if we apply the nodal interpolation, uh, we can get this type of multi scale test basis. If we change to the L2 projection, we, can ch uh, we, we will get this type of multi scale test basis. And uh, we see that the support of this basis is much larger than this one, but it is still locally. We can also use the H10 projection to get the multi scale test basis. And uh, then we will get the basis which is supported globally in the whole domain. And this is the reason we want to use this nodal interpolation operator. Uh, so in this slide, I will show the idea method, uh, which is this variational multi-scale method, uh, based on the petrol glocan method, associated with the trial test period V capital H and WH. So this VH is the cost space, and WH is the multi-scale test space. Uh, so then by construction, we can show that actually this solution is the nodal interpolation of the uh, solution, of the fine scale solution. And directly from the property of the nodal interpolation, we can get the stability of this algorithm and the local quasi optimality of this method for free. So in the remaining part, I will focus on the localization of this variational multi-scale method. So first, we need to define the element patches uh, for the support of the local problems. So uh, for each element uh, in this dark region, we can define the several layers of element patches. And uh, this is from the behavior of the global uh, multi-scale test basis. It is supported uh, in the opposite direction of the velocity field. So, and uh, this is the first layer of the element patches. This is the element, element patches with two layers, and uh, this one is with three layers. Then we can define the element characters and the localized multi-scale basis. So the localized element characters are defined in this way. Instead of defining the bilinear form on the global domain, we only need to define it on the element patches with this L as the number of layers outside of the element T. And this B is the velocity. Uh, then we can sum uh, all of those elements on the cost mesh to get a localized character with layer L. And also, if we take the limit with this L tends to infinity, we can get the element character uh, in the global domain. And uh, we can get another definition for the global character which is the sum over the cost, cost mesh of this element character. And uh, now we can define the localized multi-scale test space. 
which is denoted as this WHL. Uh, this is an uh, illustration of the localized multi-scale test basis uh, for one nodal basis. Because for each nodal basis, there are four elements associated with nodal, this nodal function. So we need to uh, solve four local characters and then sum them up to get the localized character. So those are the four localized characters, and this is the localized character for, for the nodal function. And the last one is the localized multi-scale test basis. That is derived from subtracting the localized character from the nodal basis function. And uh, if we, if we, so the, and uh, this one is a good approximation to the global character we have seen before. And I can, uh, we also get the proof for this, the convergence rate of this localized character to the global character. So first, uh, we need to show the exponential decay of the element character. So that is, uh, after signed the element patches, the energy, uh, the H1 seminorm of the character will decay to zero exponentially. So here, beta is a constant that is bounded above from, from one. Uh, then this result is the approximation property of the localized character to the global character. So here, uh, V is any uh, cos scale basis function. And this C, CV is the global character for this function. And this CLV is the localized character for, for V. And uh, this is the error between the localized character and the global character. And uh, we can show that the HY seminorm between those two can be bounded uh, by beta to the L negative one, with L as the number of layers in these element patches. So now we can define the localized VMS approximation to the model problem. So this is also based on the petroglucan coupling of the cost space and the localized multi-scale test space. And we denote the solution as the UHL, with L as the number of the layer in the element patches. So first we need to show the if soup stability of this problem and uh, which can be guaranteed if this number of layer is large enough. So in this problem, there are three scales, the uh, cost, cost match size, capital H, the perturbation parameter, F2, and the five scale match size, small h. And uh, this capital H is much larger than the stability uh, parameter, F2, and uh, this F2 is much larger than this small h. So in, under this assumption, actually this L is a order logarithm of y over F2 square. So at last, we will give the error estimate from the five scale solution to the localized solution, UHL. So the first result is the global error estimate. So this uh, global error estimate can be bounded by two paths. The error from the ideal method, the global variational multi-scale method, plus the error from the approximation of the localized character and the global character. So this is the, this is the error from the ideal method, and uh, this part is the error from the approximation error of this localization. And uh, this is a quasi-optimality uh, result. 
And also we can get this local error estimate for this localized, localized VMS. And there are the assumption that this error is large enough. It's our order logarithm of uh, y over f2 square. Uh, then for, uh, for any element patches, kappa, that is a uh, union of course, uh, course elements, then we can calculate the uh, local, er local HY seminorm error. So it is also bounded by two paths. The first part is from the idea method, and the second part is from the localization. And uh, note that this part have this backlit number, but uh, we have this bit to the L negative Y, where this beta is bounded away from Y. So this term can balance this part if this L is large enough. So uh, at last, I will show uh, three simple numerical simulation results. Uh, so here, uh, this solid line is the, is the reference solution. And uh, there is the Glacken approximation solution and the solution from the SUPG. And also the solution from this localized uh, variational multi-scale method. So from this figure, we see that uh, there is the oscillation for the Glacken approximation. And uh, also, uh, there is no oscillation for the variational multi-scale method and this localized variational multi-scale method. And uh, uh, this localized uh, variational multi-scale method performs sli slightly better than this SUPG in the sense that it has less smearing effect. So uh, this figure shows the convergence rate of the localized VMS, VMS uh, with only one layer in the H1 seminal. And uh, we, uh, we use this F2 from 2 to the negative 5 to, to, the, to the negative 8. And uh, all of them will converge uh, in first order. So the last one is the uh, error estimate in L2 norm on this localized VMS. And uh, here is the uh, H2 and uh, this is H1. So, and uh, this one is F2 equals 2 to the negative 8. 2 to the negative 7 and 2 to the negative 6 and here 2 to the negative uh, 5. So uh, from this result, we, show, uh, we, can see the, we can see that the pre-asymptotic effect uh, will show if this F2 becomes smaller. Okay, uh, this is the last conclusion. So in this last part, we have derived a new locally quasi-optimality variational multi-scale algorithm based on the nodal interpolation operator. Uh, one feature of this algorithm is the definition of the element patches, which is, depends on the velocity. And uh, uh, we can also, uh, and uh, this type of localization uh, can approximate the idea method exponentially. And the third is that uh, the convergence of this localization is proved under the assumption that the local patches are sufficiently large, uh, which is of order logarithm of y or f2 square. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>